What's up, sisters and friends? Y'all, I'm so excited to start y'all's Monday off together. This one is gonna be so good because if you loved Elise's podcast, Elise was my friend who was waiting on a baby and that story was just incredible and I know so many people resonated with it. Now we have Elise's sister on the podcast who's another great friend of mine and I'm just so stoked that she's here to share her story and we just get to talk because honestly, anytime I get to hang out with Lydia, it is a joy. So welcome to the podcast, Lydia. <laughs> also my twin, yes. which we don't really see it, but like it is so crazy. No. Like people stop you all the time and ask you if you're me. Yes, I got that from like, I was like in ninth grade. Like it was like we were little and like we, because we grew up in the same town. We knew of each other. We didn't really know each yeah. other very well. But I would go to like church camps or like Chick-fil-A, just the most random places. And they'd be like, do you ever get told you look like yeah. Sadie Robertson? And I was like... Yeah, I do. I it's actually so do, but crazy. it's like... And it's weird because I get the same thing. When mm-hmm. I was younger, people would be like, do you know Lydia Dozier? Y'all look so much alike. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that is so crazy. And we both always got told that we looked like Miley Cyrus, yes. which is so funny. Yes, it was always you and Miley Cyrus. Those are my two like Me celebrity too. lookalikes. I was like, yeah, those are... I get it all the time. Which you really do look like Miley Cyrus. Mm-hmm. I don't really see that for me, but it is weird how many people have said that. Like, <laughs> I legit walked into an airport convenience store one day and someone goes, my God, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> and I was like, nope. <laughs> like, what? But it's just funny. So we get that all the time. And yeah, we grew up in the same place. Mm-hmm. We didn't really know each other. And same with Elise. Like, yeah. I knew of her, didn't know her until I moved back from Nashville and we yeah. all kind of got connected. And for context, as well because Reeves um, is on the podcast. Reeves is leading Elo Worship and Lydia and Reeves are dating. Yes. So he's cool. going to be so happy you said that. I know. <laughs> he's like, where's my shout out? I know. He's like, I can't wait for Sadie to say that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Reeves is like, score. Well, it's actually really cool too because by the time this podcast comes out, the dates won't be the same. But mm-hmm. um, in our life right now, Elo Worship actually releases this Thursday or Thursday night at midnight. So really Friday. And 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 Lydia and Reese's one year is Thursday. Yeah. Which, come on. It's going to be the sweetest day. It's going to be so much celebration. So So much. That is crazy. I I love that so much. Okay, so we're going to talk about how you and Reeves started dating and all that kind of stuff later because it's just a fun story. Actually, we should start with it. I know. It's Let's start with it. It's so fun. It's It's sad. It's funny. funny. It's now it's hilarious to look back on and laugh at. Okay, we have to say it because so many people right here might be in the friend zone and they're like, what does this even mean? So you and Reeves were like best friends. Best friends. Like the best of friends. My best friend was dating his best friend at the time. And so that's how we met. And um, and at first it was like, oh, he's cool. Like he looks cool. He has long hair. He has tattoos. I was like, he's a fun guy. And it was like immediate best friends. Like we just like every day together, but truly best friends. Like nothing more, like nothing less. It was just best friends. And it didn't take long for him to, you know, I started like, okay, wait a second. He kind of likes, likes me. It. I think he likes me. And I would tell my friends, like, we'd go to his house and hang out because it was just normal. Yeah. But then we'd leave and I'd be like, y'all, I think he likes me. I don't know what to do about this. Like, I don't like him back. And what's funny <laughs> is I was always trying to set one of y'all up with Reeves. Yes. And y'all were like, no, we're just friends. And you really didn't have any interest. No. Like, you really were just his friend. I was really just his friend. Like, it yeah. was truly, like, just friends. Like, just friends <laughs> and I tried to make that clear too because I started when I started realizing I thought he was showing interest in me I was like I in no way want to lead him on so I was like how am I like am I leading him on like yeah. am I like enjoying the attention am I flirting with him like and I was like I don't think I am yeah but but I don't know because he might have thought I was because he got really bold really yeah. fast he went which that's so <laughs> Reeves like me and Reeves if y'all don't know this have been friends since we were literally yeah. in diapers and like Reeves has always been like 100% if he's like if he's either 100% in or 100% out and I remember he kind of started having feelings for you yeah. and he was confiding in one of our other friends who then gave him the advice well you should tell her yeah. and what we thought he would do was tell you hey like, Lydia like I know we've been hanging out as friends like I'm really starting to like you but that's not what Reeves did <laughs> no he's just like I love you <laughs> I have to like I have to tell it it's just hilarious because well first of all the first time he like he told me I was beautiful and that was like the first like okay, he definitely likes me. And that was when we were like at a Live Original event. And I like told y'all, I was like, y'all, he's getting really bold. And everyone around me is like, Lydia, just go for it. Like, go for it. He's a great guy. Why don't you go for it? And I was like, I just, I just don't know. I don't feel peace about it. That wasn't, I was just 
out of it. But <laughs> literally two days later after that, that's why I say he didn't wait long. He just like jumped right in. Two days later is when he showed up to my house unannounced and comes in the house and he was just like, Lydia, I just have to get this off my chest. I think I'm in love with you. Oh, no. And he'll be so mad I said that, but actually not. Cause now it's just so sweet it's because so sweet. he is just so like intentional and he knew how he felt. And he was like, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna waste either of our time. Yep. Like, I know how I feel about you. Like, I know I want this with yeah. you. So like, do you want this too? Which <laughs> you have to appreciate because so many girls out there are like, longing for oh, that yeah. like that clarity and like Absolutely. so many guys out there who are listening to this podcast it's like if you're gonna pursue a woman like pursue her yes, like yes. be clear about your intentions and maybe he came out a little strong <laughs> but at least it was clear from day one yes he was actually there was no it. confusion there like on his part I was like I know how he feels about me and that is so sweet now looking back and it's just so funny because even then that day I literally was just like okay I was like, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, okay. And then I have to tell it the next day was <laughs> we were at church and, um, and it was the next day and I hadn't talked to Reeves again and he leads worship obviously. And so he's up on the stage and he's singing and I'm on the back seat, like the back pew and I'm crying because I'm like, I love him, but is it as a friend or is it more? And I went to Sadie and Christian. <laughs> no, see, that was literally the first time and only time we've ever been on the prayer team at our church. Like, yeah. I love love that kind of stuff but like I like I like to just like go to church like we do ministry 24 yeah. 7 so I like to just go to church but I was like you know what let's join the prayer team Christian that'd be great so we joined the prayer team oh, I try to forget about this moment because now like a it's couple so years scary. later it's so embarrassing no to it's me. not embarrassing but yeah, I just scary. went to them in like full tears and I was just like I just don't know what to do and I don't want to <laughs> lose his friendship but I just don't think like this I just don't think yeah. this is it like I was like I don't know but it's this isn't what I want right now I knew yeah. that I did know that. Yeah. And, but now it's so embarrassing to think. I just like, I sobbed to y'all. But like, we loved it. And, and y'all were so sweet. Y'all we were. Oh my literally goodness. literally loved it. And the thing that was really cool, and this is like so cool of God, is that me and Reeves really have been friends mm -hmm. for so long. And you were a good friend of mine. Like yeah. you are a good friend of mine. Now we've gotten a lot closer. And you're <laughs> a great friend of mine. One of my closest friends. But at the time, like we were good friends. And so I was like, well, this is really sweet because if Reeves was dating her, like that would make me so happy because like <laughs> Reeves is like family. And then like, she's my friend. This yeah, would be awesome. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, I got to respect her. Like she doesn't want this. But I'm like, pray I'm like god change your mind like change yeah. your mind and it was but it was really beautiful because I do think that like there is something to say like it could be the right person in the wrong time oh and like yeah that was the case there like it was yeah. the right person you didn't know that at the time but like it wasn't the right time like you you weren't there yet and yeah. so when was it that you realized okay I'm gonna give this a shot Friends, I'm so excited about this new partner of ours. We have Crew, who is joining the partnership of the One Let's Give podcast, and I just love it so much. Most of y'all all know this, probably uh, don't even have to say this, but y'all know I love the Bible. I love the Word of God. I love it so much. It's pretty much why I do everything I do. However, Bible access is not something everyone has, and Crew has a heart for everyone around the world to make sure that they get access to the Bible in their own heart language, which I am fully behind that mission in any way I can be. So I just want y'all all to hear about this because I would love y'all's help. Honestly, sometimes I think we forget about that, that lots of people, and I mean lots of people around the world, cannot get a Bible. Like, it is not available. And that's why I'm so thrilled to partner with Crew. Crew is one of the largest evangelical organizations with over 25,000 missionaries in almost every country. I mean... That's huge. Crew is giving Bibles around the world to people in their own heart language, and they're sharing the hope of Jesus while they're doing it, um, obviously, because the Word of God is the hope of Jesus. But here's what they need your help with, and I would love for you to participate. For only $21 a month, which I know monthly subscriptions can be hard sometimes, but I'm telling you guys this is worth it. You can provide three people with Bibles each and every month, and when you sign up to provide three Bibles with gifting just $21, and hey, maybe text some friends. Text some friends to do it with you. Say, hey, Will you give $7 a month, Venmo each other, and one of you does it? I mean, this would just be huge. As a thank you for that, as a thank you for subscribing for $21, Crew will provide meals to five hungry families through their humanitarian aid ministry. And you're also going to receive a copy of my devotional book, Live on Purpose. So just text Sadie to 71326 to help today. Imagine how much your gift is going to change someone's life by just texting Sadie to 71326. That's Sadie, S-A-D-I-E, to 71326 to help now. Or visit give.crew, that's C-R-U dot org, O-R-G, slash Sadie, and get involved today.
like it, it really was like right person wrong time and now I can look back and see that because even like okay well to answer that question I guess first um I kind of like I knew even from the first time I said no and I told him I pretty much put him straight in the friend zone I knew that like there was something more like the reason it was hurting so bad to do that you know I was like yeah. okay I put I mean like I've said no to guys before and like yeah. you know usually it's just like a uh, you move on and it's like okay yeah. whatever but like with him I was like did I make the wrong decision like it was a constant like I just wasn't sure you were wrestling yes with it. I was yeah. wrestling like a lot and so I even like I talked to some other mentors of mine and I was like I just don't know like did I make a wrong decision should I've gone for it and they gave me good advice too and it was like now like you've made that decision and like you kind of have to give him that space because he also asked for the space yeah and they were like you have to give him the space and also like pray in this time like let God would do something in your heart and in his heart yeah and like if y'all are meant to be together you will come back together better but like right now like if you might have liked the attention they're like it could have been the attention you liked so like yeah. and humble yourself to like admit that if that is the case and it's good. either way so like it kind of took a lot of humbling of like you know what like if I made the wrong decision like God has this in his hands yeah. like it's in his control yeah and so a few months went by and um I did I like kind of put it I was like God I'm giving this to you like this like because it was like a heartache even, you know, yeah. which sounds weird because I was the one who's friends on him. But for me, I was like, I'm losing my best friend in this because yeah. he was my best friend. Yeah. Um, and I also do kind of want to say this, too, because I tell people now all the time, like at first with Reeves, like the main reason now I can like admit I didn't like uh, jump straight into it was my own insecurities mm -hmm. because like I had like this vision in my mind of what I was going to end up with, you know, yeah. and I was like, I'm going to end up with like a six foot six, like really huge like jacked guy and I was like and I've done all of that before you know like I've been with guys like that before and it didn't work and now it's like so sweet to see like in that season of like it was like five months which isn't that long but like five months yeah. of like I had told him no and I was like wrestling with that no God truly like changed my heart and my totally. desires and like it was like I don't want a six foot six cool. like big guy anymore I want a guy who like loves you Jesus like yeah. I want a guy who loves you more than he loves me yeah. and like serves you before he serves me but because of good. you know I was yeah. like he just changed the desires of my heart good. which was so sweet and yeah. like that is so cool and I'm glad you said that because I wanted to say that but mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you wanted to share it but it was like I remember the reason why, as a friend, I yeah. wanted to encourage you to date him is because, well, of course, like, I wanted you to date him because I love you both. But the real reason is, like, as you were telling me, like, all the things you like about him, like, the only things you didn't like it about him yeah. were based on insecurity. I was like, yeah. you were like, well, I think y'all are at like, the same height, right? He's a little shorter. Okay. Like, I didn't we're know. We're good. We're past that. It's we're great. past it. Yeah. We're no, past it's, it. That's real. And that's, that's like, he was a little yeah. shorter. And that's real. And honestly, so many girls think that. They're like, I had to have a guy taller than me. Yeah. Or he has to be this type of build. Or I want it to be like this type of person, an athlete. And at the end of the day, like, that's all going to fade. You oh, know? Like, well, exactly. And that's what, like, you told me and other people told me. It was like, Lydia, at the end of the day, like, who do you want to raise your children with? Like, yep. who do you want to do life with? When you're, like, 80 years old, like, who do you want taking care of you? You yep. know? It's like, he, okay, he's an inch shorter than me. Who cares? Yeah. Like, are you who gonna cares? miss out on like yeah. all of the fullness of like who he is yes. and the way he's gonna pursue you and how incredible he is because of one inch difference? And yes, like, I know. And but but like that's real. Like mm -hmm. I know it when you say it like that. You're like, oh, how can I think that? But that's yeah. real because like we as humans, like we're very like image driven. And like you even said, you were like, I love the way he looks. I love his tattoos and yeah, his I, ruggedness yeah. and his long hair. And he's like, he's a creative and an artist and he yes. sings. So, like there's so many attractive features to him, but there was one thing in your head that like was making you miss so much of the rest. And yeah. like, it's so cool that you got past that. And now obviously I've been dating for almost a year I mean, and are like so in love and have the sweetest relationship and are yeah. some of Christian and I's greatest friends. And so like, it's just really cool to see how far y'all have come. And I know so many girls, maybe they're dating their best friend or maybe yeah. they, maybe they're like, this might be the right person, but this is yeah. the wrong time. I love how you said you were like, I kind of had to be like, okay, God, like maybe I made the wrong decision, but you're in this. And mm -hmm. I think so many people think they're going to mess up God's plan. And you really, I mean, unless you are deliberately disobeying God and running in the opposite direction of God, you really can't mess up God's plan. That's like, and that's so much like you can just live in peace knowing that like if I'm pursuing the Lord and if I'm like doing the things of the Lord, like 
I can't mess it up. Yeah, like, no. You know, like, he's, because he's in it. Like, nope. he's he's in yeah. it with me. He's right beside me, yep. walking it with me, so. And he will reroute you. I mean, oh, if yeah. you can learn anything from Jonah, <laughs> let me tell you something. You want to like, run from God, on, go he's like, <laughs> let me have a fish swallow yeah. you and get you in the right place. Like, yeah. that actually is very comforting to me to know. It's like, okay, I'm going to do the best I can to follow you, God, but even if I take a left whenever maybe I should have gone right, like, you're going to redirect yeah. my path. Like, so good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to talk to you about your story because you have uh, such a honestly relatable story to so many people. Like you grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. Um, you are a strong Christian now, but there is a little in between where you got a little lost. Yeah. And I think so many people not only have experienced that, but honestly, so many people listening to this are in that boat. Yeah. Uh, so tell me about high school and college. Yeah. Got a little shaky. I know. So, I mean, I did. I grew up in such an amazing home. As Sadie said, Elise, who was on the past podcast, uh, I don't know how long, a few weeks ago. Um, she's my sister. And it was just, I grew up in like your typical, just amazing Christian home. And I did have a great childhood, everything. Um, but then when I got to high school, I was leading worship in like the church youth group and everything. Like I was going to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. And I honestly probably could have answered every like Bible school, Mm -hmm. like Bible study question, you know, like I knew it all. I knew it all, but I didn't truly know Jesus and I didn't have a relationship with him. And that was the difference, you know, and it kind of did start out like, uh, in high school, I was kind of like the good girl, you know, like I was like, Oh, it's Lydia. Like she's a goody goody. Like she's doing everything right. And then, um, my junior year is when I kind of started to like, you know, well, I'll say this, my mom always told Elise and I both, if you're going to serve Jesus, like if you're going to serve the kingdom, serve the kingdom. But if you're going to like live in the world, like live in the world, mm. don't do both. You know, like you can't yeah. have one foot in and one foot out. Yeah. Um, and she always said that. And so it was always in the back of my mind. And I always knew that. Um, but my junior year, I kind of started to do both, you know, yeah. because I was still on the worship team at church. And I was starting to kind of put my foot into like the parties. And I was like, okay, but everyone goes like, I don't have to drink, you know. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't have to drink. So I'd go and it was like, Lydia's at a party? Like, this is, what is she doing here, you know? And then before you knew it, it was like, Lydia's at the party. Like, yeah. it's just normal. Like, that's just what she does. That's who she is. Um, and so that was like high school. And I was in date, I was dating all throughout high school and never guys that I should have been dating, you know? Um, and then really it was just like heartache and then like patching it up with something that was not ever going to fix it, you yeah. know? Uh, it was just heartache after heartache and choosing, like, drugs, alcohol, sex over God, you know? And at the time, I was like, okay, but, like, in my mind, I was like, I still know Jesus. Like, mm-hmm. I still go to church. I yeah. still sing. I wow. still, like, I'm still I'm still going. Did you think what you were doing was wrong? I will say, like, I knew what I was doing was wrong. I did know. And I did, like, uh, to an extent, try to hide it. And I really was just living that, like, double life of, like, yeah. I was, like, constantly, like, going back and forth at this time, like, in high school especially. Like, I knew right from wrong. Like, yeah. that was the thing. Like, I knew right from wrong. And I was like, this isn't right. Yeah. But it's fun. Yeah. You know? I was like, this isn't right. And this yeah. isn't going to, like, this isn't going to end good. But it's fun right now. Yeah. And I'm enjoying it. Yeah. And I was like, and tomorrow I'll get up and I'll wake up and I'll get ready for church. And I'll yeah. go to church. Wow. You know? And so that was, like, it just kind of started that cycle. But then college happened and it was like I was so excited I was like I'm going to college I'm going to be by myself and like I can make my decisions for myself and my freshman year I was in a relationship and I really just like kind of unplugged completely from the life I knew and it like Mm. turned into like I mean it was just like a life completely like immersed in sin and at the time like I now looking back like I'd be lying to even say it was fun you know like it was like I had such a mask on like I was like at the time it was fun in my mind but looking yes I thought it was fun and like looking back I was like that was the most empty like lonely broken time when like on the outside looking into I will say this like I mean for me like even my social media, like I looked like I was living the most fun life and I looked like I was so happy and I looked like I was in the best relationship, but I was really crying myself to sleep every night, you know? 
Y'all, I do love the Abide app so much. I've told you about it before, but I just want to tell you about it again because I know so many people struggle to fall asleep at night or they don't know how to get a good routine when they wake up in the morning and the Abide app can solve kind of both of those problems. The Abide app is a Christian meditation app, but it has so much to offer. It has meditations, it has bedtime stories, it's someone reading over you in a peaceful way, scripture and truth. And man, don't we all need that and can benefit from that? I just can think of so many nights where I've just been anxious and can't fall asleep and what I want to do I want to turn on Netflix you know and just like kind of numb it but what I've found is like then I just want to keep watching keep watching next thing I know I'm up at 3 a.m. But the Abide app is not like that. It's something that you can turn on and you can hear a meditation and someone reading over your scripture, some kind of bedtime story, some kind of song or some kind of sound that will literally put you to sleep. I remember the first time I did it, I set it for 15 minutes and I fell asleep before those 15 minutes were over. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, wow, that actually worked. It's pretty cool. So I love the Abide app. Also, you don't take my word for it. It's also um, the number one Christian meditation app and Abide users actually do report less stress, lower levels of anxiety and depression and better sleep. I think we all can say we probably need that. So you can start your day or end it with a buy and it is fully based on biblical truth and scriptures, uh, audio meditations that will center you around just being closer to God. It starts from just, you know, videos that are two minutes long to ones that are longer. So you can choose that depending on the time that you have and whatever you're trying to do, um, however you're trying to get in God's word. Also, this is really exciting. For a limited time, our listeners will get 25% off a premium subscription when you visit abide.co slash Sadie. So I want you guys to all be a part of that. Uh, that's starting right now. You get 25% off a premium subscription by downloading the Abide app at abide.co slash Sadie. You'll also get additional stories, meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more with this premium subscription. So support this show and get 25% off by going to abide.co slash Sadie. So that's abide, A-B-I-D-E dot co slash Sadie to download the Abide app and get 25% off your premium subscription. And uh, that was my freshman year, and I just told you this before, Sadie, but um, three years ago today, I remember I didn't know Jesus like I know him now. I didn't know him as like my friend, my father, but I still, like I said, I still knew the right from wrong. And you, three, knew him. you knew of him. But I knew of him. him, yes. Yeah. I did not know him. And I actually, uh, three years ago, I remember I was just broken completely broken and I remember praying I was like God like if this is not the man that you have for me like if this is not who I'm gonna marry you have to help me like take him out of my life because I'm not gonna do it I was like I just know myself and like I can't I can't get out of this like I was just in a place where I was like I can't do it on my own and it's kind of like now I just we have such a sweet God because it's like Oh, so the next day is when this guy came over and kind of in like shock himself was like, I'm breaking up with you. Wow. And I remember even then I was like, God, like, I don't like, I don't even know you, but you're answering my prayer. Wow. You know, and you would think that that would have been like the turning point. Yeah. No, it actually like, but. Because that was hard. That was so hard. I mean, it was like the hardest thing. Like, yeah. you know, and I feel like people can downplay like the like hurt of a breakup like that. But no, that's hard. It was hard. And I just like I didn't get out of bed for two weeks hard. Mm-hmm. Like I was like devastated because I mean, I was 18 years old, but I was like I had already had the whole rest of my life planned in my head yeah. with a guy that like was wow. not the one, you know, wow. and um, that leads to a lot of hurt. And Absolutely. so two weeks of just like tears in my bed, like couldn't mm-hmm. leave. And then when I did get up, I got up and went to the wrong place. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of turned into that whole fall semester. I went back to college and I was just drowning like my hurt in once again, like patching it with all of the wrong things. Wow. You know, like I was like, because I remember like when when we broke up, I remember the next day I was like, God, like, I want, I want to change. Like I do, mm-hmm. I do want to. Yeah. And I remember like waking up that next morning and like getting, like, I saw this graphic that was like talking about choosing joy. And I was like, I want to like know joy, but wow. how do you know joy when you don't know Jesus, you know? Yeah. And so I was just like, I want to know joy. But then even still, even still, I like, I took off running in the opposite yeah. direction. It was yeah. like, I can't even explain it still. Like it was just like, Oh, I'm just so grateful that like God was still pursuing me yeah. even then because I took off running again. And I mean, again, I was patching it with the wrong things. I was wow. patching it with drugs, alcohol, sex. And like, wow. it was like, 
I mean, you. I thought I was at my lowest point, and then I just kept getting like dug deeper and deeper. Wow. And it was like I was doing that to myself because I knew the answer. I knew that it was Jesus, but I just didn't know how to let go of the things that were comfortable, you know. Yeah. And so, um, that was all going on. And now I can still look back though and see, even in that, like in my darkest moments, like. God was pursuing me wow. the whole time. And it's just so humbling. It really is because it's like he was there. Yeah. And it's just so crazy when I think about it because it's like I may sound crazy and people may not believe it, but I would literally like wake up like a next morning after like a night out and not even remember coming home. And I'd wake up to my phone playing worship music. Wow. And I didn't do that. You know, wow. like I did, but like, because Jesus did that, wow. you know <laughs> what I mean? Crazy. And like, it was like, I would just wake up in tears. just like, God, like, why are you still here? Like, why yeah. do you still want me? Yeah. Like, what wow. do you still want to do with me when like, I, I knew the whole time is wow. the thing. And it's just so crazy because he was there and he was like, the whole That's time he was crazy. like, just turn your face to me. You know, wow. like, he was like, just all you have to do is just turn your face to me it's so the prodigal son story it's like yeah which is so mint like that's most of our story yeah. you know it's like to a, us some extent, running yeah. us running from some extent and yours yeah. looked like that and it's like the father's always there like waiting for you yeah. to come home and even like blessing you in the meantime like here's your inheritance like here are things yes, that yeah. like have to do just because you're my child like yeah. you know like, i'm still gonna be with you i'm still gonna pursue you i'm still yeah. gonna be right here with you and i love how you said like he was answering your prayers like like even like it was like before you even like knew him before you were even I living know. for him and so many people think like okay well like when I get my life together then like God's gonna love me but like no like God loves you right in your mess like God yeah. loves you like God's heart like aches when your heart aches yeah. like he cares for you like that and so like okay I love how you're making it so clear that like you're talking to God you're hearing God, you're talking to God, but you're still drinking and partying yeah, and yeah. going out and getting with the wrong guys. So, but you're like seeking something good. You're seeking happiness, but you're seeking it in the wrong places. But then there's God on the side. Yeah. When was it that you said that truly was like a marker? Like, obviously the guy doing that was not the turnaround. When was it that it was like, okay, my life is actually going to change and I'm yeah. going to stop pursuing this. And how did that journey look? Because when you're addicted to things, it's hard to stop the addiction. So how did you actually yeah. like make a whole repentance moment? Yeah. Well, like once again, because like you said, I mean, it's hard like when you're in it because I still even like, like with the guy, I was like, I don't know how to stop. Like, I don't know how to like yeah. leave him. And in this, I was like, God, like, it would be like the weekend I would go out and then the like, Monday I'd be like, I don't know how to stop. I don't want to do it again. Like, I yeah. don't want to do it again. But I was like, but I don't know how to stop. Yeah. Was it, do and, you think it was like because friends were doing it still? Was it because you craved that? Was it because you were trying to numb? What was it that made you like yeah. not want to stop? At the time, like my community was a community like that. That was just the life we lived. Yeah. And it's like, normal. It was normal. And it yeah. was like, that's who I did life with. Yeah. It was like, that was normal. And I will even say now, like, I love those people still. I love them so much. And like, but the truth is, is like in that community, like in that world, it's like, it's all empty. Like it really is. And like, I was like empty the whole time. And like my friends were empty. Like we were just, you know, like yeah. it was numbing. Like yeah. whether it was like me numbing a breakup or someone numbing something else, it was mm -hmm. all just numbing. Yeah. And, and it was like, I think my number one thing was like, it kind of got to the point where I was like, God, like I can't do life alone though. Yeah. And I was like, these are my friends because yeah. I had completely unplugged from church. Like I was like, this was my life, you know? And I was like, I can't do life alone though. And yeah. even still, I was like, I have to have people to do life with. And yeah, I remember like, uh, I called a friend, I called Elizabeth actually. And I was like, Hey, are you going to passion? And she was like, Hey, like actually, yeah, me and Summer, which is another one of our friends, she's like, we're going to Passion. Like, come with us. Like, it was an immediate, like, come on. And this is why, like, they know how I'm living. And, like, I knew how I was living. But, like, they were like, come with us. Like, come on. And uh, awesome. and so we went to Passion uh, 2020. And it was just, like, I mean, I, it was just life-changing. Like, it really wow. was. And I was just, like, I kind of, like, went back, like, with that, like, fire. You know how, you know, you just sort of, like, I was like, this is it. Like, I'm good. I'm going to get back and I'm not going to mess up again. And it's like, I'm done with that. Like, it's good. It wasn't exactly the case, you know, like I came home and I was, I was like, God, like, like I'm going for, I'm going for it. And I like deleted like social media for a few weeks. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done. And then it really was like, I kind of, uh, I went out again. Okay. And I went out and it was 
probably one of the worst nights of my life. And it was just like, just awful. I won't go into details, but it was just a bad night. And um, I woke up the next morning and I remember it was again, like I woke up, I honestly like, I didn't even remember how I got home. And I was like in my clothes from the night before. And I was like makeup smeared down my face, like from crying. Cause I always cried. <laughs> and I just remember that day though, like I looked at myself in the mirror and this was in February of 2020. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, this isn't who you're going to be. Like, this isn't who I'm going to be anymore. Wow. And I just like fell to my knees and truly, like truly for the first time in my life, wow. I said, God, like, forgive me. Like, this is not who I know you've called me to be. Like, you've been here beside me this whole time. And like, I'm not going to live this life anymore. Wow. I was like, this isn't, this isn't who I'm going to be. Wow. And like you said, the prodigal son, it really was because so powerful. I got in my car uh, and I drove to my parents' house, which is like an hour away still crying, boohooing wow. on a Sunday afternoon. And I just walked in the house and they were like getting lunch ready from like church. And I was like, just crying. I didn't say a word. They didn't say a word. They just dropped what they were doing and just came and like held me. And they were just like, they just held me and like loved me because they knew like they had like firsthand, they were my parents. They had, wow. they knew the hurt that was going on and they knew like the mm. battle that was going on. Like, because I mean, there was a battle, like Jesus yeah. was fighting for me, but like the enemy was fighting too. Yeah. And they just like held me. And that was just like, I mean, right here on earth, like I had a glimpse of the love of the father, like wow. through my parents, you know? <laughs> I know <laughs> this story and I'm crying. Again. I know. And it's, it's just so like, sweet. and it like, I know it makes me want to cry every time, but it like, it humbles me too, because it was like, I, I just truly like I can't say that I even did that because it was like I don't I can't explain why that day was the day that it was like mm -hmm. like you're done yeah. but like it was and I wow. won't say I was perfect after that by any means yeah. like by any means but even still like after that once again I was like God like I'm I'm all in that like I really am all in but like you have to help me still like I was yeah. like still just like admitting like that I kn I, I know I'm weak I need yeah. you to like yeah. be my strength and and then like COVID happened, which I know for so many was so hard. And for me, it was so hard. I mean, I lost family members to it, but even still for me, it was like, I gave my life to Jesus. And then a month later, the world shut down. Wow. And it was like, I had no choice but to like, it, wow. it was just kind of crazy. Like for me of like, that's crazy. I was like, I know I can't do it. And he was like, yes, you can. Like here, like wow. go restore your relationship with your family. Like begin pursuing me, like build new friendships, like start fresh. And, wow. and I did. And like, and it's just so humbling because like, he's just so sweet that he gave me that like opportunity and like That's he so heard cool. me through it all. Okay fam, in our house, we are so trying to cut back on all the single use plastics because there's so many. Billions of plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown out every year in the trash and those products can be filled with nasty stuff like chlorine and ammonia. That's a lose-lose situation for you and the planet. And I don't want honey growing up around all that, nor do I want to be around all that. So you know, we are going to go green, but how do we go green? Well, we're actually going to go green by going blue with Blue Land. We used to have so many random bottles all over the place, but Blue Land is on a mission to change all of that and to get our products for something that are good for you and the planet. Their tablet refills take up 10 times less space than grocery store cleaners. And let me tell you, this stuff looks amazing. It's so beautiful in your house. And let's face it, it matters, doesn't it? Aesthetics matter and it's incredibly effective as well, which also really matters. Everything just looks really nice so we can have it out. We don't have to hide it. it actually looks nice and it's so effective. And so having those two things together is a great thing. I feel like sometimes you feel like you have to sacrifice one to get the other, but we have both now and we love it. It's been such a nice change for our family my parents also changed to it. So I see a lot of blue land around our houses and, and it looks great. And you'll love cleaning even more because it smells good. It looks good. And who doesn't love that? That's just inspiring in and of itself. My favorite scent is the lavender eucalyptus. And they also have um, iris agave, fresh lemon, eucalyptus mint, all different kinds, whatever you like the best. Um, you can try their clean essential kit which has everything you need to get started. Just grab one of the beautiful forever bottles. You're gonna fill it with warm water, drop a tablet in it and get cleaning. So right now you can actually get 15% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash woe. That's 15% off your first order of any Blueland product at blueland.com slash woe. That's blueland.com slash woe, W-H-O-A. That is so cool. It makes me emotional. It's so cool. I think one thing that's really powerful is it's, it's similar to the prodigal son. And mm -hmm. I actually had a moment like this too in yeah. life. And, and here you are saying the same thing. There's a moment when I looked myself in the mirror mm -hmm. and I was like, 
I had makeup smeared on my face too. I was in, living in a bad time of my life. Yeah. And I was like, this is not who you are. Yeah. You know? And you had the same moment where you looked in the mirror and you're like, this is not who I am. And the prodigal son have a moment when he's with the pigs. And he's mm-hmm. like, this is not who I am. Yeah. And I think that you have to have this moment in your life where like you actually come to terms with the reality of yeah. where you're at. Where you're like, this is like bad. Like I'm sitting here eating the pig slop. Yeah. Like I'm sitting here and I'm living this life and I'm drowning in sin and I'm numbing everything and I'm doing it because it feels good, but it's so empty. And this is not what I'm created for. This is actually yeah. not what I'm made for. Yeah. And like in that moment, how do you go from there to life? Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, like how do you come from there to dead to alive? The only thing is the gospel. And like you for you, it looked like going to your parents and like mm-hmm. just letting them hug you and letting them hold you and like starting with small steps, starting with a uh, community, yeah. starting with um, telling your story. I yeah. remember when you sat across the table <laughs> at lunch for the first time and you told me that and I was like, what? Because when you told me that, that was at the end of 2020, I think. Yeah, it was at fall. Mm-hmm. And this was at the beginning of 2020 and you already were so different that I couldn't even see that. I couldn't even see you in that position because I was like, what? Because you were such a different person because, like, you had just, like, I mean, it's like what the word says. Like, you were walking in darkness and you were walking in light. Yeah. And you looked, like, so fresh. Oh, I think that's, like, so cool, too, like, because for me, it was, like, I had to get past a lot of insecurity even after that of, like, everyone knows who I am now. I was going to ask you that. Did Was that hard for you just, like, being – because you said – a long time ago, you were the Lydia who wouldn't go to a party. Then you were like, oh, Lydia's at a party. Then you were like, Lydia at parties. And like, then, that is Lydia. Yeah, That's so who like, she is. Yeah. How did you get back to like, Um, who? I think it was like, um, there was a lot of insecurity and like, in the sense of like, I was almost like telling myself, like, you're not good enough. Like, you're going to mess up again. Like, you're yeah. going to fall back down again. Like, just self deprecating, which is like not what you do, you know, don't do yeah. that. But like you said, I was I was actually reading this morning in Acts and it's like the Saul to Paul conversion. Yeah. And just like all throughout the Bible, it's just, I've been just like realizing it a lot lately, like the immediately of like, Jesus changed my life that day and immediately, like yeah. I changed like yeah. because of what he did. It wasn't because of me, but it was like, I was not the Lydia that partied anymore. Yeah. Like I was Lydia, like daughter of the King. Like I'm Come a on. child of God, you know, like it right then, like, that God said it and it's done, you know? Come on. So it's like, and I did not, I did not believe that at first. Like, I yeah. won't say that I woke up and I was like, yep, I'm good. Like, yep. I'm past it. Like, no. But now I can say that, like, confidently yeah. because it is. It's like, I mean, God changed Saul to Paul and, like, immediately he was out spreading the gospel. Yeah. Immediately. It's crazy. And he was killing Christians. Like, yeah. I mean, I was doing bad things, but, yep. you know, like, yeah. he was killing Christians and immediately, it literally says immediately. I love that wow. word. I don't know why, but, like, immediately he did it. Yeah. It's like, like, don't even hesitate. Like, yeah. who cares what I did? Like, because Jesus is in me now, like, I can do this. Like, and it's so cool because even with Paul, like, God immediately changed his life and he immediately started preaching. But that does not mean that everybody around him immediately, oh, yeah. like, accepted that. Yeah. Like, when, whenever God told Ananias to go pray over Saul and to go, like, yeah. in the scale, he, he told Ananias, so you're going to go and you're going to lay hands on Saul and the scales are going to be removed from his eyes. And Ananias is like, Heck no. He's like, do you like, know what Do you, you know, know who that he, is? he was just killing Christians? Yeah. Like, do you know? Like, because that was so dangerous for him. Like, if this is not true, if he's not hearing the Lord correctly, he's about to get murdered by Saul. Mm-hmm. But he goes and he lays hands and he prays and it happens. And then there's a, a couple of verses later, maybe it's even in a chapter, yeah. and the disciples are like arguing over Paul coming back. And I think it was Barnabas who stood up. I'm, I'm, I could be botching that, who was like, no, like he's had a true change. There's like one person who was like, no, like, I, I know this is true. Like, yeah. he actually changed. And so, like, that is so true just to make a point that, like, God really can immediately change your life. And he can draw you out of that. And you can truly go from dead to life. And you can truly go from darkness to light. And you can truly change. You can walk in being the yeah. That doesn't mean everybody's going to see that. And yeah. I think you have to believe it before other people necessarily respect it and see it. Yeah. And the fruit of your life does the talking. Oh, I yeah. remember talking to someone about this when I had gone through a rough season and saying, well, like, if people know this about me and I start living for the gospel, like, what are people going to think mm-hmm. who saw me in that other light? And she told me, she said, let the fruit of your life do the talking. Yeah. And I remember that was almost like a hard thing to hear because fruit – 
sometimes takes a long time to grow. Like, it actually can take a long time for people to see it. Yeah. But when people see it, then they're like, oh, well, now now they just see you as the fruit. Now they just see you as Lydia. And, like, yeah. that's why it was so shocking to me because I only knew you as Lydia, my friend, my awesome friend who's mm-hmm. so joyful and fun and loves her friends so well. And I was just like, wow, that's crazy. And so, like, now, like, you're so not known for that. Like, you're, you're known for who you are in Christ. And that's the beautiful thing of, like, the old is gone, the new has come. Mm-hmm. And your life is such a testimony of that so now you work for fca which is just awesome like you're full on like ministry and like in a godly relationship so like you're and this is 2022 this isn't that long ago no no like 2020 was not that long ago and here you are and so like what what's it like now like where's your life now how'd you get involved with fca and what's life look like yeah well um I know it is crazy because even still, like you say that, I mean, it's been like two years since 2020, you know, like it's really not that long. And I think it would be easy still for me to be like, oh, well, it really hasn't been that long. Like, am I, uh, you know, but it's like, like you said, you have, you have to believe it for yourself and then like the fruits will grow. Like, as you like, don't wait for them to grow though, like grow with them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so it was, um, I started to feel like well, let me start from last May. I graduated from college. So um, 2021, I graduated from college. And at the time, I had a plan to go get my master's in mental health counseling. Um, but then the school that I was going to lost their accreditation. And I found that out like five days before graduation. And so that was kind of like a, mm, yeah. like, what what do you, what does this mean? Like, what's next, you know? Um, and so then I was working out at Camp Chioka last summer also, summer camp, and um, I kind of, at the beginning of the summer, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to, like, do my best to just be in the moment and, like, be present out here, like, pour into these campers, like, work here in this ministry, like, love these kids the best I can. And then, I mean, honestly, but, like, every weekend I was like, what is my future? What am I going to do? I don't know. Um, and then probably, like, two weeks before school ended, or not school, before camp ended, I... Um, really just like was just crying during worship one night and I was just like I felt the Lord put it in my heart and he's like like you're gonna do ministry and like mm. your like your story like it's not it wasn't for nothing like yeah I want this story to be used to like touch other people and I was like I just remember being like I don't, I don't know about <laughs> that like, like Ooh, I hear you right on that one like, it come again you know like I'm like I don't know um but I did and I was like and it was cool though because while yes I was like me I didn't I was like okay let me call my parents and so immediately I was like okay let me call them I called them and I was like hey like I know we've talked about me like getting my degree and like furthering my like career and that and I was like but I think God told me I'm gonna do ministry wow. <laughs> and they were like my parents are amazing but they were like are you sure like, <laughs> are you sure about that and I'm like yeah and they're like well what did what do you want to do like what does that look like yeah like you know, like, there's not a ton of, like, just options for, like, females, like, in, like, in my mind, yeah. like, and in their mind, you know, and I'm, like, well, I have no idea what it's gonna look like, but I know that God was telling me that. He said it. I was, like, what? I know he was saying it, and it's on my heart, and it's heavy on my heart, and so, like, I know, like, something. I don't, yeah. I was, like, I don't know what, so it was yeah. just, like, that answer of, like, I don't know, you know, yeah. which is not a great answer to, like, give or to receive. <laughs> yeah. But that was my answer. I was, like, I don't know. And so we kind of like ended it at that. And they're probably still in their minds like, okay, like she can't spot the end. She's going to come home and like apply for school and like we're going to be good. Um, But then it was cool. The story of how I like got in with FCA is pretty cool. So FCA here has, which FCA is Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, We haven't had that in like five years here. And so the head football coach at the high school. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Uh, Because I used to do that. I know. We had it when we were in school. Um, But they've had it, but not like as... um, you know, like cool. a yeah. leader. So there was no leader for like the past five or six years or something. And the head football coach of the high school I went to actually, um, April of 2021, felt called to FCA wow. full time. And he's been a coach for 20 plus years. And so he just kind of was like, he stepped out on a limb, trusting wow. like God and in faith with the, like what, what, what? what God was calling <laughs> him to. And he uh, took the position as the full time area director of FCA. So, that goes back to now. So then August 2021 is when school was starting back. And my mom taught at the high school that I went to also at the time still. And so she 
um, was talking to some coaches um, and she was like, yeah, well, Lydia feels like she's called into ministry. Kind of just casual conversation. Yeah. It was like, she does, you know, she feels called into ministry. I don't know what that looks like. Just kind of, you know, getting wow. off her chest. And um, one of the coaches like heard her. And then uh, next thing you know, the next day they're at the mall. And this coach that my mom was talking to ran into Jeff, which is my boss now. And Jeff is like, man, I've just really been like praying like that God would send a female to like to wow. this ministry. Like, cause he's like, I, I mean, we need a female. Like, yeah. you know, like sports aren't just for guys. Like yeah. we need a female too. And the coach was like, oh, well, Miss Dozier's daughter is apparently feeling called oh, into wow. ministry. And so Jeff's like, oh, interesting, interesting. And then next thing you know, uh, at that same day, him and my mom ran into each other at the mall too. And he was just like, Miss Dozier, I need your daughter's number. Like he's like, and my mom's like, huh? But if you knew Jeff, he is like so on fire for the wow. Lord. And he was like, he was like, I like the Lord is like, this is, she's the one. Like she is the female, like I've been praying That's for. That's crazy. And so- he calls me and I like declined the call because I thought it was weird that my football coach was calling That's me. Hilarious. But then I call him back and uh, it took like a few months of like like getting it all figured out and everything. But it was like pretty clear, pretty fast, like that That's that crazy. was like the answer. Like that was what God was calling me to. Wow. And I don't know. It's just crazy. That, that is crazy. Now it's been a year since all of that too, which wow. is just wild. And when I say it's crazy because yes, 2020 wasn't that long ago. But your spiritual maturity and where you're at in life feels like forever ago. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's what I love about God. Like, time, what is time to God? I you know, know? Yeah. like, it's just, it's crazy. So you are so planted and like so invested in all the things that God is doing in your life. And now you're literally going around to athletes all over Louisiana and yeah. like in our local high schools and talking to girls who are literally right where you are at. And you're yeah. like, and it's just so cool because it's not like, you're a Christian coming in like, don't do the wrong thing. Like You're like, I've been there. I've done all that. I can tell you it's empty, yeah. but like, look at what I found in Jesus. So yeah. You're like the best example for all those girls. Yeah. And I'm secretly so jealous because I want to do that job. <laughs> I, I want to go into high schools and talk to girls all it's day long. So cool. It's just so cool. It is just crazy. I mean, because even like, I literally will go, like, I will go to the college I went to. Wow. And like, talk about Jesus. And I'm like, Oh, it's just so humbling. I say yeah. it so much, but it really is because it's like I don't deserve to be able to do this, and I'm not worthy to do this. But because God has called me to because it, like, God. like yes. I can live a life. What did you of it. say before the podcast? Like because of the grace. Yes, of God. Yeah, I was listening to a sermon last night, and it was talking about like by the grace of God, one day you can look back and like see Him in like all the little moments and stuff. Yeah. And it's like it's it's so true about everything. Like by the grace of God, I can see like He allowed these things and He allowed like all these things because of like right now, like yeah. because like I get to use that now to so like for good. His glory. Because like that's what it's all about is like to bring so His good. name glory. And it's cool to like know like even like the things we go through now, everything it's like by the grace. One day I'm gonna look back now and be like, oh. There he was. Yep. Like, he was right there, too. And even just down to the days. Yes. I mean, down to the days. It was the same with Elise. Like, down to Christmas Day when she yeah. thought she was pregnant. It's like down to the three-year marker and the one-year marker of y'all's relationship. Like, yes. God is so intentional. If you have the eyes to see it, like, you will see it. And yes. it'll blow you away. He's so sweet. It's so true. You truly do just have to, like, have the eye, like have yeah. your eyes open. Like, be willing to, like, see what he has. Yeah. And, like, the little things. Because yeah. it'd be so easy to miss that. Of, so like, true. Like, not to pick up on those little details yep. but he is a god who cares about the little things and like the little details and everything yeah. matters and it's sweet when you can like just join in with him on that it's so like, cool it's like the classic for like give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the heart to receive yeah like there's a reason you pray those things because it's mm -hmm. like truly like if i have the eyes to see you i'm gonna see you yeah the ears to hear you i'm gonna hear you if i have the heart to receive what you're saying then I'm going to receive it. Yeah. And like my life's going to change for the better. So this is so good, Lydia. I'm like, every time I get to sit across from a friend and hear their story, because I know these stories, but it's like, it makes me smile. It makes me yeah. cry because I'm like, God is so good. And his yeah. faithfulness over every story is so crazy. Like the fact that he is, we have this in, in Ella Worship, our song, Promise to the End. It's mm -hmm. like, you're the lion and the lamb, redeemer and a friend. Yeah. And the reason why we put those four words is like, he is this big, huge God that's like faithful to yeah. creation and all things. Yeah. But he's also a friend and yeah. he's faithful to you personally. And like that to me is just like mind blowing. It's yeah. so cool. Well, 
Thank you for sharing your story. Yes. I know you change girls' lives every day when you walk on their school, but I know for a fact girls who are listening are being moved and changed by your story. And I love how in the Bible, like the first preacher, really, it was like the woman at the well when Jesus yeah, said, go and yeah. tell your people. That's my favorite. And she, come on. And she goes and tells her community and people come to know Jesus yeah. because of her story. Yeah. And like, I strongly believe that's happening right now all over the world. People who are listening to this because of your story. And so thanks for the podcast. Thank you so much. It's been so fun.